Okay, I promise I'll be back before dark. Yahoo! I, uh, woo. Uh, huh? Jeez. Oh, Honey, I'm not going. <laughs> Welcome back to GP Outdoors. Joke's over. Who overtook my snow, please send it back. It's December 12th. Just wanted to do a quick video today just to be responsive to a question I got a few times on my chainsaw PP video I did. A couple weeks ago, I released that video and I'd mentioned that I disliked the steel helmet. And a few of you asked me why I keep using it and why I don't just go back to the old Grippo helmet I liked. Well, I do use it. In fact, I just used it again last night on my way in through the forest. The old helmet, I didn't get rid of it. It lives in the old pickup truck. That's its home, never leaves it unless I need to use it. And if you recall, I used to have a Husqvarna apron. I didn't get rid of that either. Also resides in the pickup truck at all times, but they're not alone. I always have a chainsaw. When I'm not using it here at the cabin, my 261 lives in the bed of my pickup truck at all times. When you own a forested property, you don't want to be coming in and out of the forest without having a chainsaw on hand. Just like last night, I'll show you why. It may not seem obvious to you at first, but remember, you built your cabin in the middle of a forest and you've got a driveway winding through that forest. Mother Nature doesn't work on your schedule and you're gonna find, as I have over the last 10 years, that without any exaggeration at all, you will never go more than a few weeks or a month without coming around a corner and finding a tree down across your driveway. It happens all the time. It's a regular occurrence. It's not once in a blue moon after a windstorm. They just fall when they fall. And so once again, last night, I'm rolling in in the evening in the dark, come around a corner, I found the first tree. Luckily, I had my chainsaw, fired it up, warmed it up, cut it up, got it off the road, drove around a few more corners, had two more trees down. And we didn't even have a windstorm in the last week. What you'll find is it happens throughout the summer months, but it predominantly happens more frequently throughout the winter. When it's cold, the trees have no water in them, a lot of these softwoods, like these balsams, they get very, very brittle in the wintertime. And you get a little bit of wind or a snowstorm up and they're falling everywhere. You folks have seen over the years how many times I've had six, seven, eight trees down in the driveway that I've had to clean up with the grapple or the tractor. It's a forest. So I just highly recommend that you always carry one of your chainsaws with you, always. Whether you're leaving with the family or you're on your way in late at night or for the weekend, it's highly likely that if you haven't seen a tree in a couple weeks, you're gonna see one. <laughs> it's just something I've learned over the years and I hope it's helpful to new property owners. And hey, if you're not comfortable carrying gasoline or a gas-filled chainsaw in the back of your pickup or in your car, for that matter, the trunk of your car, 
These electric chainsaws really perform well these days. The battery technology has changed a lot. You folks will remember we've had this Oregon for I think two years now. And the batteries are lithium ion batteries. They hold their charge forever, pretty much forever. I think the last time I used this saw was probably in the spring with Guy. I haven't used it or charged it since. And I'll bet there's still a lot of charge left. Yeah, look, <laughs> it holds its charge for a very long time. They're great little units. The only drawback, of course, it's a limbing saw. So it's good for about seven or eight inches in diameter of hardwood. Softwood, it'll cut larger trunks, but it has its limitations. And when you're coming through the forest, you have no idea what size of tree is gonna face you when you come around the next corner. So I tend to carry this one because I've got the truck, but I did carry this for a while as well. It's a great option. Just a little bar oil, no gasoline in your trunk or in your car. As you folks can see, I haven't mounted the snow removal equipment yet. We're not expecting any snow for another five days and it's only three or four inches. So <laughs> I hope you found today's video helpful or at least informative. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to each other. Let's keep our fingers crossed for some snow and I'll see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers. Oh, geez. Come on.